Located in the downriver section of Detroit is the town of Taylor and Taylor Lanes. The PBA Tour has been hosting events here since 1985. That first year, it was the fiery one, Pete Weber, beating out Tom Baker to win his seventh PBA title. In 1991, Dave Ferraro won a second Touring Players Championship here by only one pin over Roger Bowker. The following year, Amaletto Monticelli became a two-time PBA champion here in Taylor. Then last year, Patrick Allen claimed an emotional victory at Taylor, becoming the fourth player to win his first PBA title here. Who wins in Taylor this year? We find out next. Minutes from Detroit, ESPN's live coverage of the PBA Tour brings you the Greater Detroit Open. Five of the world's best bowlers going for this week's championship. Now let's meet our five finalists. First from Atlanta, Georgia, PBA Hall of Famer with 22 career victories, including one two weeks ago in Memphis, Tennessee, Brian Voss. A two-time All-American at Wichita State University in his second TV show of the season. From Wichita, Kansas, Ronnie Wallachek. He has 34 career titles and is appearing in his 134th telecast. A record, a five-time PBA Player of the Year from Ocala, Florida, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. From Glen Allen, Virginia, in his second year on tour. Today is debut on television, Kip Roberts. A 24-time regional titleist with one PBA tour win. The lone left-hander in today's show from Amarillo, Texas, Mike Scroggin. Detroit, Michigan is known as Hockey Town, USA. So who better to throw out the ceremonial first ball than the one and only Mr. Hockey, Gordy Howe. What a moment for all of us on the PBA Tour and with ESPN to see this legend. An opportunity to face a little pressure. Not trying to score a goal. Trying to knock down some pins. All right. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Kept it on the lane. Six decades of hockey. 32 pro seasons for the legendary Gordy Howe. Here are the matchups for the Greater Detroit Open. Lonnie Walchek battles Brian Voss, already a winner on tour this year in Memphis. That's the wild card match. The winner takes on Mike Scroggins, who's been brilliant, perfect in match play, heading into the championship round. Another Hall of Famer, Walter Ray Williams Jr., matches up with Kip Roberts. And his one semifinal. Brian Voss, Randy, telling us how excited he was to have such success in Memphis two weeks ago. He thinks that dramatic win over Danny Wiseman having to double plus pin count in the 10th frame will carry him a long way in terms of his momentum and focus and success on the lanes. Yeah, it's just, just a giant confidence boost for Brian Voss. He's on the way. And a great start. Well, just like what we saw two weeks ago from Brian, those two perfect shots in the 10th frame. I can hear you. Here's Lonnie Walchek from Wichita. We are not only honored to have Gordy Howe throw out the ceremony of first ball. Walchek breaks out of his first ball, but Gordy with us as well in the booth. You have quite a bowling heritage, Gordy, going way back to where you uh, met your wife, Colleen, correct? About 53 years ago, yes. We met her at the, uh, I used to walk after practice and I could let this gentleman to get them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's the match win total for Walchek this week. Lonnie, who made the TV show for the first time this season in Memphis a couple of weeks ago, but lost in his first match. 
Says he got a little too excited after a good start. We'll see how he focuses after his first strike here. Split. If he doesn't get excited, he's not human. <laughs> exactly. That's why I, I, felt a, I felt a ton better when I get on the ice and somebody hit me, then I'm into the game. Or excuse me, we have to get the ball over into this zone here, slide that four pin over into the 10. <laughs> you, you've probably made that a couple of times. Yeah, when I miss the net. <laughs> oh. Instead, misses both, so an open frame. And Randy, we just talked about how nervous he was the beginning of the TV match that he had in Memphis with a great that's, start. That's Does the pretty same hard thing here. Do. It's pretty hard to do get it back that fast. Isn't it? Yeah. No, we had uh, the hockey team used to practice Monday. We had L, so we did that. We did a lot of bowling? Did a lot of bowling every Monday. Who was the best bowler? <laughs> that lady. <laughs> that lady. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she, she had a 236, right on. and the last day I beat her by two. <laughs> wow. Hockey's greatest couple. There they are. Gordy and Colleen Howe. First ever female inductee into the USA. Right. Hockey Hall of Fame, very impressive contributions to the sport. Well, she, uh, we weren't being paid that much. We put her home for collateral to pull a ring for the kids. So, yeah, that's how I felt about her. Right <laughs> Get them all. Yeah. Oh, Thirty-nine. That comes in a bit high. And he'll have two pins to contend with that for his mark. Ugly. Yeah, that ball goes high. And you know, I talked to the players prior to the start today, and they all told me the same thing. The left lane has more friction. So you're going to see the ball's hooking more on that lane. The right lane played a little bit better all week long, and it's playing a little bit better today. So, Gordy, way back when, when you were one of your many decades in professional hockey, did the guys use bowling as a way to relax? Uh, to get together. Yep. That's basically what it is. Boss picks up the mark. We'll see how much the open frame for Walchek damages his chances to advance onto the semifinal. This is the wild card match, and we are pleased to be joined by... Legendary Gordy Howe. Joe <laughs> Lewis Arena just about half an hour or so away where the Stanley Cup champion Red Wings play. That crosses all the way over and a Brooklyn strike. And a nice break. That, that ball is a lot further left than Lonnie's first shot on that lane. That was uglier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Lonnie, not your best, that's for sure, buddy. But uh, this ball <laughs> finds a lot of friction. You know, the thing about the lane conditions this week was you, there wasn't a lot of margin for error. You had to be really accurate, not only with speed, but with direction. Mine came right at the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now. Danny Reed focus. He's talking about the ball. Take advantage. Urged it into the pocket. And that's that's a, a nice way to take advantage of the good break on the right lane. Six pin's going to go to the sidewall, second to your right, and it's going to chop the 10 in half. And when you get that kind of pin action, you see Lonnie's reaction there. When the pins start falling that way, that's telling you that your ball is entering the pocket the right way for maximum carry. So, Gordy, you had a special ball drill today here it at the... drill today. How did it fit? Good feel? Good. Yep. That's... Uh, I don't know what prop... I know what it's doing. But... <laughs> Solid 10 pin there for Voss. Now, you had a chance to throw out that ceremonial first ball, Gordy. You came through, didn't get a gutter ball. How would you compare the pressure of maybe today's ceremonial first ball with some of the big goals you scored? Any connection there? Uh, not really. I just had too much fun today. <laughs> and I had a good pleasure of meeting the all gentlemen who were who got the nerves. You came through now. for us on live national TV. We appreciate that. You saw the Voss number on the single pin conversion. Continues to stay at 100% on lane 40. We have to do I think that, you know, that's a really nice stat to see. You know, a lot, I talked to a lot of friends at home that bowl league, and, you know, how'd you bowl? I, well, I shot 680. How many spares did you miss? Well, I missed three 10 pins. Well, that's 33 pins. Now, instead of 680, you're, in, you're into the 700s. Mm -hmm. These players out here don't miss single pin spares. Gordy Howe with us in the booth here for the start of this wild card match. Gordy, six decades, 32 pro seasons, 2,589 points. All those goals, more than 1,000. 10-pin oh, again. About. <laughs> talking to that ball. When you look back at your career, is there any one thing that stands out? The Stanley Cup championships with the wings, something like that? Nah, uh, basically in Houston when I put on the blades with Marty Markerson. That, uh, and it, it pretty well equaled everything because when I retired, there was a tear in my eye because I said I'd given up the chances of playing with the two kids. So 
But when my wife found a loophole in the contract, they had to get good from that point. <laughs> Changed things a bit, didn't Ross uh, picks up a mark. All checked for a strike now, and a triple in the fifth can even things up despite the disastrous open second frame. Hey, if you're going to open, you know, you, opening early is sure a lot better than opening ninth and tenth frame. Get it out of the way early, throw a string of strikes, you're right back in the match. For a triple. Again, comes in high, and just a six pin count. You know, and the hard part when you see the guys playing where they are is that they're they're playing so far or so close to that to that channel that gutter. Yeah, yeah. You know, a little bit too far to the right and the ball falls in. Problem is a little bit too far to the left and it does exactly that. Three, six, nine, ten. And the problem with this spare, you gotta hit you, you gotta get the ball to drive into the three pin to cover that back pin, that nine pin. Trying to increase the spare conversion rate we saw a moment ago. Oh. Leaves another. So a second open frame for Lonnie Walchek in the first half of the wild card match could really spell disaster. See, and the one thing that I don't understand is you have to have the ball hooking into that spare, and he threw a plastic ball, a very low friction ball. That ball has very little chance to get that back pin out. It's amazing. I was talking to Ted Williams, and I was asking baseball questions. He's asking me hockey questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how little we know. Well, it was a real thrill to be behind the scenes and watch Gord interact with the five bowlers on our show today. They obviously... Oh. Oh. Uh, nice break there. Really taken aback to be in Gordy's presence and a chance to shake hands, get a little autograph signing session, some pictures. 410 is standing up. That ball is a little light in the pocket. Gets a nice break here. Rolls with 10 late. You know, it's amazing what sports can do for you. I said, uh, the gentleman was running for presidency, and, and uh, he, got, he went out the back way, and somebody yelled at the house are here, Colleen and Gordy. <laughs> he turned around and came right back. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just how much. And I felt the same way the first time I ever met a gentleman by the name of Harry Watson. I scored a couple of goals against him with the Air Force. Was that right? And what he did, he just looked at me and uh, said, what's your name? How old are you? So I'll see you in the big time. <laughs> <laughs> You're big time, that story. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, We're back after this. It. Thank you. ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Tour is presented to you by... Dexter, the number one Boeing shoe in the world. What's your size? By Miller High Life. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. By Cambridge Credit Counseling. Find out how good it feels to be debt free. This is the 17th year Tara Lanes in Michigan, just outside of Detroit, has hosted a PBA tour event. Welcome back, everyone. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire ESPN PBA crew. Glad you could join us here in suburban Detroit. Randy, your thoughts on this field of five. Walter Ray Williams Jr. bowling tremendously well. Third TV show already of the season for him. Maybe back in a Player of the Year honors for the first time since 98, but Brian Voss charging too. Right, and you know, that great Hall of Fame talent, but I think the, the one player you really have to look forward for is uh, Mike Scroggins. Mm. He's the only left-hander in the field, and he told me last night it was to his advantage to bowl a right-hander. All right, oil pattern A again for the second straight week. Break it down for us. Let's take a look. It's the exact same pattern we used last week on synthetics, but two different synthetics. Last week, you saw Danny Wiseman win playing the deep inside line. This week, the players went a lot straighter because this week, this synthetic surface was much smoother than last week's. So much more on the lane patterns. Log on. PBA.com, the best bowling website out there to be completely updated on what's happening with each and every event. Live internet simulcast of the match play events as well. All available. You can sign up for that. And seeing our TV show on delay as well. PBA.com. That came in high. It was glad he avoided any sort of split. And a three pin up for Voss. Yeah, you know, the, right now the guys are just struggling to get the ball to the 1-3 pocket. And again, you know, it's that fine line. This ball's left again, and he's calling for it to go one way or the other, just not right in the middle. It's a nice break, though, just leaving the three pin. 100% on single pin spares. And continues to be perfect in that category. On the left. One in Memphis. Two weeks ago, and the wild card because he lost to Walter Ray Williams Jr. in the round of eight in a good match. He told us today 
Brian Voss did before this match. That was exciting. Went right down to the wire. And a lot of emotion involved as well. Just with his game in general, but especially in that match last night. Let's see the wild card winners. What's happened with... Qualify so far. Pocket. You know, in the, the first six games that Brian Voss bowled in match play, Shot. he outscored his opponents by over 400 pins. I mean, he really took it to him. In the second round, the round of 16 starts off 278, 278. Closely tracking those two numbers on the bottom. Brand new stats here. Again, it comes in high. Just can't seem to find the groove. Well, that's a ball change right there. Trying to find a ball that will go a little bit straighter to push further down the lane before it starts to hook. And again, this ball just doesn't go far enough to the right. Back end's too hard, leaves a 3-6-10. Now Lonnie doesn't have to worry about that nine pin. Can throw that, that uh, very low friction spare ball. Cover all three pins with the ball. Does that. Wasn't as clean as he would like. Hey, cover all three pins with the ball, man. Look, one, two, three. Uh, okay, we'll just barely cut a piece of the three pins. Just take the mark however you get it. I wonder, I wonder if the, uh, the wind from the ball blew that over. Speaking of blowing, you see Lonnie blowing in his thumb hole it's to get a nice secure feel. When you blow in your thumb hole, it adds just a, just a little bit of moisture and gives you a nice grip. Plus, you watch Lonnie, he uses a lot of rosin on his thumb. He really likes to secure a thumb. Max score of 207, down 28 pins. Trying to coax that into the pocket. Ah, let's get something started. <laughs> Looking for a groove. Now, you know, this one's a lot closer. Still can't get the ball far enough right of the head pin. And early on, we're seeing the guy struggle a little bit with, with ball reaction. Picks up his mark. Really felt it was a grind. <laughs> Trying to find some answers. <laughs> you heard him say, hey, anybody have a suggestion? Well, my suggestion would be one of two things. Either moving right and throwing the ball a lot straighter and a lot harder, or moving in, getting softer, and going around it more. Getting back to the grind we talked about with Lonnie, really is surprised. In Memphis, everything seemed to be clicking for him. Had great ball reaction, but just has not been the case in Detroit this week. Always well, well, well enough to get here is Voss. Yes. Strikes again on lane 40. That was a big shot there, as you see the point list. Top eight go right to the round of eight, skipping qualifying at the season-ending world championship in March. Chris Barnes, a slim advantage over Walter Ray Williams Jr. Walter Ray may pass him. Should, in fact, after making the show, depending on what happens. Find out early Monday when the new list is released. Oh. Ten pin. Well, I tell you what, if it wasn't for a couple of those ring and tens, in fact, I think that's the third one he's left this game, you know, this would be a slaughter. Right now, stop Brian running Boss... it out. Every time I run it out, it's solid. Okay, we'll stop <coughs> running it out, Brian. It's going at a 214 pace with a spare. Each perfect single pin conversion so far. Ten pin. Remains 100%. And, uh, no. Lonnie Wallachek's math, well... Brian Voss just has to show up in the 10th frame. Needs three pins to win. Lonnie Wallachuk's basically locked out of this match. There you see the open frames. Just completely did him in. Little trip of the four pin late. Lonnie's like, where was that last frame? Ball's going to drift a little bit high. Two pin goes to the sidewall. This never happens when you need it to. At least for me. We're all working on improvements. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> no time. On lane 39 in the pocket. Lonnie got some time at home after the event in suburban Chicago last week. Got to go home to Wichita and see his wife and young daughter. He thought that really recharged him and helped him get to the TV show this week. Really beneficial to see the family again. It's awfully tough. These guys grind out week in and week out. And Brian Voss knows about family and how crucial his young sons were. His win in Memphis. You see him in the upper left there. Still focused. Drifting a little bit off that pocket, but still a strike.
have to wait till next time. To practice. We gotta come out in 52 in the third. Yeah, you know, it happens so often out here, you, you know, it, whether it's qualifying or what have you, you get 15 minutes of practice, you know, prior to the telecast, you get 30 minutes of practice, and you shoot 190. Dad loves you. I miss you. Talking back home to his young daughter, just two and a half years old. Seven to win, just keep it on the lane. Shouldn't be a, shouldn't be a problem for Brian Boss. And that's enough. Right down the middle. Saw a two pin that clinches a victory in the wild card. He's into the semifinals. You gotta take five out of play, folks. All you need seven. <laughs> what he means by that is throwing the ball straight and hard at the head pin. He's got a lot better chance of getting eight or nine than trying to hook it when the lanes are a little tricky. Or even. Brian Voss has wrapped this one up, and we will fast track to the end of this match. Brian, we'll take on Mike Scroggins, the lefty. Excuse me, Brian's going to get lined up on this shot now. This one's not going to be straight down the middle. He's going to check something out right here with a different shot. To give, himself, to give himself an idea for what he's going to do in his next match. Two thirteen to one ninety six. Voss advances out of the wild card bracket. Now to the semifinals. Fellow Hall of Famer Walter Ray Williams Jr. trying to take over second place all by himself, pursuing the legend Anthony with forty one titles. But Kip Roberts, making his first ever TV appearance, stands in his way. The youngster, the Hall of Famer, are now. Getting set for the first uh, two semifinal matches, the Greater Detroit Open, just outside the Motor City. First ever TV appearance. What kind of things are going through your mind right now? Are you focused? I, I am pretty focused right now. I'm just going to try to make good shots. Um, I've caught a lot of good breaks this week. Hopefully that will continue. Uh, that's that's been the big difference in the week for me. How are the nerves? You feeling relaxed? Oh, I, I'm shaking all over. <laughs> first ever match play, Randy, head to head, Roberts and Walter Ray Williams Jr. Well, you know, it's first time ever on TV, and you got to go up against the greatest of all time. <laughs> uh, not for me, thanks. Uh, I'll sit up here and watch. Unless he does a lot of that. All-time TV appearances, Walter Ray. 21 more shows than Earl Anthony, the great late Earl Anthony. This guy is Mr. TV. An amazing statistic to see how many television appearances he's made. So you go from the all-time leader to a rookie being on the lights. Said it to us a moment ago. Shaking all over. How does he respond now? What it counts. Pocket. <laughs> Good response. And what a great performance all week long to get to this point. Had a great match last night with Ryan Schaefer coming down to the fifth and deciding game in the tenth frame. Kip Roberts needed a double in the tenth frame. He got up and just went bang, bang. Got by Ryan Schaefer of Elmira, New York, in the round of eight. Schaefer trying to make his second TV appearance of the season. Fell short. Pocket again, late 39. And double the start. Uh, you know, the one thing that's a little bit different here is the amount of loft. You see that ball going out on the lane, and that's what's delaying hook. The further out on the lane that ball gets, the ball can't create friction if it's if there's nothing but air underneath it. The, the earlier you get the ball down on the lane, the sooner it's going to start rolling. Look out. Drip in the tent pin. Messenger across the deck. Let's take it out. Head pin's going to go to the side while this way and come that way. Here it comes. The bird dog, the scout. Bull by. 
trying to track down his 35th career title. He has said to us, feels like he's on track for perhaps another player of the year award. A little bit off the pocket there at a double wood 2 8. Well, ball went light, leaving the 2 8. Again, anytime you see that double wood, the Rule of thumb is that you need to throw a hook ball in there and cover both ball, both pins with the ball. Get the ball to hook into that spare. Unless you're as accurate as Walter Ray and you can throw it straight at it. He's got his hook ball out. He's going to hook it at this spare. Covers. Nice, Mark. You know, the thing that I see early on, Dave Ryan, is that Walter Ray was kind of playing with Brian Voss and Lonnie Wallachuk were, were playing the lanes. Kip Roberts left of that. And early on, those first two strikes he threw were beautiful. That ball reaction looked great. Needs help. Oh. Ten pin. Oh, I need to find my spare ball. See the match play results, bottom of your screen. Well up to the round of 32. That was best of seven, the round of 16, round of eight, best of five, and now we're into the championship round. Some great bowlers having some good appearances here. Just outside the strike. An easy pickup spare for Kip Roberts. Don't ever call him John. No, it's it's Kip, or if uh, you're rooming with his roommates, which is Tommy Jones and Kenny Samard, they call him Kipper Dipper Do and Munchkin. The Kip came from uh, a friend of his father's. His father's a Vietnam vet. A friend of his name, Kip. Another Vietnam vet. Lost his life in Vietnam. His father is a tribute to his friend. Nicknamed his son, Kip. John's son is also known as Kip, the 11-year-old son, John the third, But it stops there. Dad's name, John, nickname Skip, brother, Trip. And this guy here, Kip. And if you and I were in that family, you would be... I'm going to go with zip or flip. I think those are pretty complimentary. Are you? I would probably be dead. I knew that would happen. Of course. <laughs> Oh, boy. Open frame after a really good start. Dave Ryan and Randy Dip Peterson with you from <laughs> <laughs> the Greater Detroit Open. <laughs> our entire crew. We had a great start to our day, joined by the legend, Mr. Hockey himself, Gordy Howe. Got to throw out the ceremonial first ball. And there he is watching closely. What a pleasure to have him around. Walter Ray made a ball change on that lane, went to something, a little lower friction ball, went a lot straighter. You know, if you see Walter Ray struggling to hit the pocket, you know that the lanes are tough and they're they're tricky right now and the players, they haven't gotten dialed in yet. Kip Roberts made those first three shots look easy, came back through the fourth shot a little bit hard to a 10. Works on a spare. That finds the pocket. He now, is back. Now, the, watch this shot here and how much straighter Walter Ray is going. He went to a ball that goes a lot straighter, lower friction ball, watch it hold its line, and just a subtle change of direction in the back part of the lane. You know, the amazing part about this week's lane condition, it's only 37 feet, which is considered very short on, on our tour, but the lane's played very tight. Big strike on lane 40. Kip says his son is known as John only. The nickname stop right there. Talk to his roommates about some of the, the things that they either liked or didn't like about uh, Kip. And Tommy Jones said, well, he's he wakes up way too early for me. Only gets five hours sleep a night, Kip tells us. That's, That's amazing. pretty much what he got last night, so he feels like he's on par with his rest. But... As he told us before the match today, very nervous. Strike here gives him a six. Finley working on a strike. Oh, ten. Look out! And tripped out. Down she goes. 
In his first ever TV appearance, Kip Roberts gets a good break for a double. He has got a six pin lead facing the Hall of Famer, Walter Ray Williams Jr. in a bid for yet another championship. Kip Roberts, first ever TV appearance, all smiles for now. Head to head with the legendary Walter Ray Williams Jr. Kip Randy, the subject of our Dexter approach this week. Well, Kip Roberts gets to be my guinea pig uh, again. Power stroker, dictated by his timing. He has a low backswing, but he gets there ahead of the ball. Watch this right here, see where the ball is. Foot's already getting there. Comes to a stop, the ball goes through. Go ahead and roll it. Now here's the thing, this week very unusual. Synthetic waves, but perfect wood approaches. No need for the snow tires, just a regular heel and a regular slide sole. So that's this week's Dexter approach. In addition to great footwork, he really feels his layout with his equipment. A little adjustment with the ball over the last couple weeks has really helped his cause. Speaking of Kip, now Walter Ray on lane 40. Yeah, Perfect. Come on. And it does, doesn't take Walter Ray long as you take a look at Paige. She's out shopping for a new motorhome this week. So yeah, Walter Ray said that she's been uh, in serious negotiations with local motorhome dealers here and in Grand Rapids, the next tour stop where we're going next weekend. It's close. Yeah. Purchase is right around the corner, apparently. I'd, I'd hate to be that salesman. Paige, one of the nicest ladies in the world. <laughs> you don't want to negotiate with her. It's going to be a hard bargain, no doubt. Yeah. Pocket again. And what I wanted to say was look at the first three frames. Walter Ray makes the ball change. Fourth frame was close. Next three shots, all flush. Yeah. And when you see him starting to stare at it, stare at it going down the lane, he, you know he's getting dialed in. Kip down, 14. Strike here, he's down four pins. Got it. And what a huge break Kip got in the sixth frame. When he carried that mystery messenger, gave him a three-bagger. If he doesn't carry that hit, it's strike, spare, strike. Looking for a four-bagger and a chance for a six-pin lead. There's a great view of both. The bowler and the ball. ESPN in sync. Oh, it's double wood, two weight. Oh. That ball needed to hit a house. Yeah, a little fast and missed it at the bottom of the swing just a little bit. That ball not creating enough friction to hook back into the pocket. Needs to improve, certainly, on the spare conversion rate. And we also need to add that, that the spare that he missed was a 2 10 We factor in the splits. Very difficult at best to make, right? Uh, cover ball. Oh, just nudges the two pin, but <laughs> barely. Wow. You know, again, the reason why you want to throw a hook I'm ball. I'm hurting him right now. I'm hurting him. Watch the two pin. It's the first part, the, the front pin. <laughs> Three pound, eight ounce wood versus a 15 or 16 pound bowling ball. Just got to catch it just enough. He'll gladly take it. Looking for a four-bagger, Walter Ray. This to go up 16 pins. A little high. Oh. Boy, well, that was a huge break. Almost left a 4-7-10. Too much adjustment there. Well, he went dead flush in the sixth frame. I don't know how much of an adjustment he would need to make. Low friction spare ball, as you see all the players do out here, or most of them anyway. There's a reason for that, the lane conditions being as tricky as they are going from side to side, going across lane, when you throw that low friction ball, it doesn't read the lane condition. All you gotta do is throw it in a straight line. Yeah. Perfect again on lane 39. 
the strike there. Walter Ray set himself up in the 10th frame to shoot 238. Kip Roberts, if he strikes out, 9th, 10th, 233. He needs it. Try to upset the legend. Oh, wow. Tap in. I had a chance. I had a chance. That was a pretty good shot he made. Cover to spare, double in the tenth, and force Walter Ray to strike on his first ball and get good count to win. Yeah, Covers it. Hi. That's pretty good. He knew it well. Yep, Roberts telling us before the match really has felt comfortable throughout the entire fall swing. But sometimes, with the incredible grime these players go through, Randy, it can be a break here or there, something really small that keeps you away from the round of 16, the round of 8, and in Kip's case, the TV show. Yeah, well, no matter how good you play, no matter how well you throw it, you still have to have breaks. I'm trying. We talked to Walter last night, Dave, and, and it hit his match, his match, against Brian Voss, he told me, he said, Brian Voss completely out bowled me, and I won. Here are the words from Kip Roberts, just one shot, trying to stay focused. Before the match, he told us how nervous he was. This is a big shot right here, because this will put the pressure on Walter Ray to perform in the 10th on a lane that he's been struggling on. All right, bro, you got to get more than half of these. Well, that's a huge shot. Watch this profile. He sticks the landing. Look at that form. Notice how he posts the shot. And watch the six go to the wall and take care of business. And what a huge shot. All the pressure now on Walter Ray. Look at her three straight. Another. Walter Ray Williams now needs a strike and eight to advance. Currently down four. Roberts finishes out with a 222. That's what he needs. Can he get it? Well, he puts the great touch on that shot, gets it in the Swiss zone, and he carries. This ball's going to be half pocket in between second and third arrow, and the good carry. And you know, you don't get good carry, you don't have carry like that if you're pinching it at the bottom. That ball, when it's clean out of your hand, makes the pins go down, goes off hits. Four pin, got nine total. That's what he needed to advance off. To the finals. And he has clinched yet another trip into the championship match. Here in the semis, comes through. Picks up his four pin, picks up his mark. And another victory in match play. Their first ever appearance since the match play format. Introduced in September of last year. Thank you. Kip Roberts will have to wait at least one more tournament to get its first career title. Walter Ray Williams going for number 35 today in Detroit. That was Joe Lewis Arena. This is a great crowd today in Taylor, Michigan. We'll have a packed house next week in Grant Rapids 2 to watch Pete Weber defend his title. He's the subject of this week's Miller High Life. Get to know them. Weber. When I was two, my dad would let me push a bowling ball down the lane. So I actually, I say I started bowling when I was two. Yeah, he's back in the ball! Back in the ball! School was a big waste of my time. Uh, the teachers didn't like me. I didn't like the teachers. Get it right there! So I, I quit in the middle of the 10th grade. Six weeks later, I had a GED and was ready to go out on tour. I am GED!
I turned pro at the age of 17, came out on the tour in 1980, proceeded to win Rookie of the Year. Things just escalated from there. He ain't getting his first one against me, no way! Uh, my favorite food is barbecued baby back ribs. Uh, I think that's the greatest food ever made, and I, if I could eat it every day, I would. My fans can expect from me the same thing they got last year. When I make TV shows, I, I'm going to be there. I'm going to have my sunglasses on. I'm, I'm going to be emotional. I'm going to win. And this year, I think this is my year for Player of the Year. Next week, the PBA's tour stops at PBA Banquet Classic. Western Michigan, Wyoming, Michigan, near Grand Rapids, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, here on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Great heritage of bowling tradition in Western Michigan. Great tradition, too, with Brian Voss trying to pass Marshall Holman with another victory. He's already won once this year. That in Memphis two weeks back, he says the confidence has completely returned. Coming up next, he's head-to-head -head with a left-hander, Mike Scroggins. <laughs> We are ready to resume play here outside Detroit. The wild card match went to Brian Voss over Lonnie Wallachek, meaning he's advancing now to take on the lefty, Mike Scroggins. Kip Roberts, good effort, but he falls short to Walter Ray Williams. You know, trying to make PBA history today. Brian Voss now joined by Randy Peters. Brian, you know, the big buzz going around the tour the last couple of weeks were the two clutch shots you threw in the 10th frame to beat Danny Wiseman in Memphis. How is it that you're able to perform under that kind of pressure? Well, you have to, anytime you bowl a match, you have to ex expect to have to throw two strikes to win. And when I enter a match, I always think that I'm going to need two strikes to win. That's, that's the way I think you have to approach, and that's, that's just what I do. Let's hope I don't have to do that today. It's a little nerving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brian, thanks a lot. Good luck. Rhino going for number 23. Back to you. Randy, he appears as Lucy Goosey and relaxed as we've seen, Brian. In some time, speaking with him today before the match really has taken so much from the success that he and Randy talked about in Memphis. He said if he hadn't have come through with the double after Danny Wiseman challenged him, it would have probably stuck with him for months and months, but instead he stepped up at the right time and delivered. Now he's trying to get off to the final. Ten pin. <laughs> Sometimes that 10 pin is stubborn. Yeah, we've seen Brian leave a variety of 10 pins. The ringing 10, where the six goes up and around, that time's the flat 10. Six pin just kind of falls off and lays in the channel. Some of the greatest TV I've been a part of was a chance to watch Brian Voss and his sons enjoy that incredible win in Memphis two weeks ago here on ESPN. Picks up his 10 pin for a good start. He said he and his boys talked about it, sort of reflected for about an hour and a half on the ride back from Memphis to where they live in suburban Atlanta. And after that, they had some movies in the VCR, and that was it. Well, I enjoyed it for a little while, Dad. Now let's move on, huh? Yeah. All right, Dad, that was great. Can you throw on the, can you throw on the movie now? And, uh, Dad, put on the headphones and listen to your music, and we'll be chilling back here in the back. Lefty Mike Scroggins. You saw his vitals trying to get back in the winner's circle. First time in a long time, since 92. Seven pin for him, his first and only PBA title. It tells us the confidence is back. And a little bit like Roberts, where he's bowled well on the fall swing so far, just unable to crack the group to get himself to the show. Maybe this is the boost he needed. Well, you know, I think that the thing to watch for here is, number one, what kind of bar reaction does Mike Scroggins have? And number two, how well is he going to throw it? All starts at 7.30 Eastern with our ESPN coverage right to ABC Sports. Yeah, those, those two teams being just best of friends, aren't they? I mean, God. gone back for oh. years. I mean, just an, an all-out war anytime those, those two get together. Early on, it looks like Mike Scroggins has got a nice little line to the pocket. But you know what? Brian Voss, that first game, bowled a, bowled a very nice game. The exception of three 10 pins could have been big, could have been in the 250s. for that messenger. Oh! <laughs> that 
was the late messenger. Very late. Oh, nice break. <laughs> About the 13th board. Hello, my friend. Oh, down she goes. Don't give up on it. Never turn your back on him. <laughs> Can never turn your back on those guys. I've found that these bowlers are coaxing down those pins. <laughs> Got to talk to them. Got to react. Oof. Ten pin. Another ring in 10. Brian never figures out how to get the 10 pin out. It'd be perfect. The thing that I like about Brian Voss is that his body position actually goes down at the point of release instead of coming up and out of it. You see a lot of great players doing that these days. That body position goes down ever so slightly, whether it's one or two inches, but that keeps you into the shot and keeps you from pulling up and out of it early. Perfect match play record. Trying to become the first undefeated player since match play started in September of last year. To go through match play to a championship, that would be incredible. He's on the verge, hugging the channel. Boy, is he close. Well, and, he, and he just missed that shot completely at the bottom. And what I mean by that is he, you know, the ball just basically came out of his hand too quick, had no time to apply any fingers, any hit, any power. Spare conversion rate there at the bottom, just 81.2%. All of his games pulled. Leading him up to this championship round and a shot at the finals. Take on Walter Ray Williams Jr. He's won his semi already over Kip Roberts. And, you know, that spare conversion rate, that, that includes splits. He's 100% not only this week, but this season. 100% on his spare conversions. So not counting washouts and splits. That's the little extra dead wood there in the uh, left channel. Be cleared up before Brian throws his shot on that lane. Yeah. Takes care of business on lane 39. Yeah, the thing you watch for is a player who makes a bad shot like Mike did on that right lane. He follows it back with a very, very good shot. Didn't overcompensate and over grab it at the bottom. Just made a nice, clean shot. As promised. Do it again. There you go. He wants it out of there for sure, and he's cleared away. Did you see that hook thing come out of there? I could use those for one. Of, I could use one of those for my barbecue at home. The extension one. Really start flipping those steaks. That'd be cool. Shish kebab, you're thinking? Yeah. Or? Okay. Chicken steak. Why not? Wow, pocket, another great shot from Brian Voss. He goes for a 23rd nope. career win. Already the 44-year-old in the Hall of Fame. That happened back in 94. Went several years between wins until his victory two weeks ago in Memphis. His last prior had been in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and in Virginia Beach in 98. He thinks he is back. And in a groove. Yeah. Evidence of that. What no. a perfect shot. Boy, you think that win a couple weeks ago has helped this guy's He's mental outlook? Second. Just, a split. Just watch his bar reaction going down the lane and all of his mannerisms, everything that he's telling you with his body language, just to me spells confidence. Scroggins working on a strike. Chance to even things up with a double in the fifth. Yeah. yeah, does it. His first ever show was his first ever tour win back in 1992. Sacramento, California beat Robert Lawrence for the championship. And told us today before the match he thinks a lot about winning that title. His big goal starting this fall swing on tour was to prove himself once again that perhaps 92 was not a fluke and that he can get back in the winner's circle but 
just goes to show you how incredibly grueling and challenging the tour is. Talented players like this yeah. have to wait so long. Incredibly competitive PBA Tour. Scroggins with a triple now takes a 10-pin lead. Taking on the Hall of Famer Brian Voss. As Randy said, he's got the emotions tuned up here in Detroit. Welcome back, everyone. Taylor, Ma wait a minute. <laughs> Is that your handwriting, Randy <laughs> Peterson? I recognize that anywhere. Oh, I got to get my money back. Wrote that guy. sign and handed it to that guy before we got on the air today. Uh, this week's days in on the road. We are headed cross state, just about three hours to Spectrum Lanes outside Grand Rapids, Michigan. Then the Pepsi Open near Philadelphia, all leading up to the TOC Tournament of Champions. In Uncasville, Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Some regional tour information for you as well. Western New York and down in North Carolina, east and south. Days in on the road. And that's where we're all going next week. 1 o'clock Eastern here on ESPN. March to the World Championship to be held here in Taylor, Michigan. That continues. Looking for a triple here. Trying to even things up. Brian Voss. Good work. <laughs> Special thanks to Ted and Liana Dobbins, co-proprietors of Taylor Lanes outside Detroit. And those fine folks are going to host us. PBA World Championship in March. We'll also have arena setting finals we are looking forward to that on well, that Dobbins family what a great job they've done here we we just love coming to Taylor Michigan to Taylor Lanes and it's all to do with that family what a job what a great job looking for a four bagger messenger again no it won't spin toward the 10 pin this time I talked earlier about the lane conditions the surface the wood approaches you talk to any player this week, they, they'll all tell you the same thing. Perfect conditions. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire ESPN PBA crew. Watching Brian Voss trying to march off himself into the finals to take on fellow Hall of Famer Walter Ray Williams, Jr. It's fine, Brian, there you saw the shot clock. Doesn't come into play very often that the bowler will wait 25 seconds and get that violation. Well, these players here are pretty fast. Uh, there are some players that get very deliberate on our tour. It's just the way it is. And we have rules just like in every other sport. You got shot clocks. Looking for a four bagger. On lane 40. Oh. Seven pin. Spare here. This match will be dead even after seven frames. Ball comes in just a pinch light. This ball definitely good enough to strike. Kind of leaving that half seven. This point of a big match. We've talked about Scroggins' perfect match play record. Perfect on the single pin. Spare conversion rate as well and continues that. Now we enter the stage of the match where mental focus is so crucial. Mike told us before the match today that he spoke with fellow PBA bowler Paul Fleming in Japan who gave him a book about mental focus. And he was surprised at how much it had helped him prior you guys didn't really believe in using a sports psychologist, but sometimes that can be beneficial. Yeah, and I think at this level, you know, all the players out here have great physical games, but what separates the men from the boys is the mental game. Does yeah. he have the mental strength? He thinks so. And an interesting thing to note about Mike Scroggins' style is what he does with his right hand. A la Earl Anthony. Earl used to keep his right arm in front of his body through the whole shot. That kept his shoulders always open. He could never close them down. And watch his right hand right there, how it stays in front of him, pulls back just a little bit at the end. But that left arm, or that right arm, excuse me, staying in front of him, keeping those shoulders, constant angle. Eight frame for Moss. I mean, you just, can you just not get the sense that this guy because of what happened two weeks ago, is not only full of confidence, but he's puring it off his hand, and what a terrific ball reaction he has right now. On tour, we call that a look. He's got a really good look. 
Remember a couple of weeks ago, after not doing well early, listen to the focus, listen to the words. He broke down his approach on video for hours, made some changes, tinkered a bit, and that has really paid off. Looking for the third lead change. Four pin. You heard Brian say, I got to get this. The reason why is that ninth frame strike does not allow Mike Scroggins to shut him out. They both got the wall, they tie. Mike Scroggins now can strike in the ninth and 10th frame, win this match. Four pin for the mark. We have a sudden death roll off if in fact it's all tied up. 219 pace for Brian Boss. The same for Mike Scroggins. If Mike Scroggins strikes here, and goes nine spare strike in the 10th. Brian Boss can throw three in the 10th to win by one pin. A strike in the ninth and striking on the first ball in the 10th, Mike Scroggins is going to advance to the finals against Walter Ray Williams Jr. Looking for a double on nine. Here. Yeah! Here. Well, just great pin action. He's got that great angle playing the outside line playing in between the first arrow and the left side of the channel. And what great pin action. You get angled to the pocket with these strong bowling balls in rotation, you're really gonna slap these pins around. Mike Scroggins told me last night, it was his advantage to bowl right-hander. It was his advantage all week long. Big shot right here. That's what he needs to win. Strike and six. Doesn't get it. Off the pocket a bit, 4-7 up. Voss knows there's an opening. What? This ball is just right the whole way, and I think Mike will be the first guy to tell you that that just wasn't a good shot. Brian Voss knows now he can double in the 10th and get nine to win. That's if Mike Scroggins strikes on his fill shot. The strike on his fill shot will be 227. Brian Voss, double nine to win by one pin. Remember what Brian has talked about. Absolute desire to have that situation. Needing a double in the 10th. May need it again. Seven pin. You heard what he said. Where was that shot when I needed it? His players can feel it as soon as the ball leaves his hand. 226. Brian Voss, two strikes and eight. And Dave Ryan, you said it. This is the situation that he thrives on, that he lives for. Two weeks ago, saw him do it to Danny Wiseman. Two I asked him perfect shots. How many times had he watched the videotape of our ESPN broadcast where he doubled to beat Wiseman in the tenth? And he said, oh, 15, 20 times. <laughs> That's all. He just loves to live for that moment. Here it is again. Needs it. And that was a real late 10 pin. The shot is perfect, looks perfect. And watch the 10 pin, the last one to go down. Barely, that six pin barely catches a piece of it. That is what remains. A strike an eight. It's been 10 years since Mike Scroggins has won a title. He wants another shot at it. Boss has other ideas. Yeah. 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 Pressure. Response. Can't you can't get too hooped up right here. You still need eight pins. I mean, can I re-rack that? Pinch one off, and that ball goes right through the face. You could get five. He's going to compose himself. He needs eight. He's a good shot. He's taking a re-rack now, and I guarantee he's taking a re-rack to buy himself some time to regroup to catch his breath. Walter Ray Williams Jr. knows he's in the championship. Just doesn't know, as of yet, who he'll face.
One ball. Needs eight to advance. They got ten. ten. And I don't think there's any player that has watched or that is watching, including Mike Stragans, that doubted Brian Voss would do that. Three pin victory for Brian Voss. That means two Hall of Famers will match up for the championship when we come back. <laughs> was the last time? Yeah. Last time was uh, 98. Is that right? Can I tee up on that? Can yeah. I tee up on that? Don't call it the net. I won't, I National won't Championship. I won't mention it. I won't mention yeah, it. I won't up. mention names. What yeah. a match. All right. Oh. Are you going to see? Welcome back, everyone. Boss and Williams have met in title matches four times. They've each won two the last time, 1998. And we are getting set for a rematch between two Hall of Famers. Welcome back to the Greater Detroit Open, just outside the Motor City, about half an hour or so. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire crew. Could it be any more dramatic or more exciting? And as we talked about, Brian Boss facing the pressure and again coming through incredible yeah you know you're not surprised that he's doing this but you just got to ask yourself how many times can he do this can he pull this off he doubled in the tenth the last match you saw two great hall of famers going at it for the title head to head couldn't ask for anything better today from the detroit open and a championship recap randy wild card match brian voss watch the great pin action the 10 pin just gets sawed on defeating lonnie wallacek semifinal number one Deadeye, throwing the heat between first, second, and third arrow. And a great match against Kip Roberts. And then BV, Brian Voss, two beautiful shots in the 10th frame to take care of Mike Scroggins. And we are set for our Hall of Fame matchup. That's our championship recap. Perhaps these two will be battling it out in the finals next week when we go to Western Michigan, the PBA Banquet Classic, the second straight year at Spectrum Lanes in Wyoming, Michigan, near Grand Rapids. About a three-hour drive, some 175 miles from where we are in Detroit right now. So our dream matchup comes next. Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Ryan Moss, each looking for a little history today in Detroit. Don't go away. Last week, Danny Wiseman beat Walter Ray Williams Jr. 277 to 237. Great championship match at the Miller High Life Open outside Chicago. Wiseman carried nine straight strikes into the 10th frame, but would leave the 2-8 sleeper combination. Ending all hopes of the perfect game, but he did hoist the trophy. For the second time this year, Walter Ray found himself on the wrong side of a great score in a championship match. Brian Voss and Walter Ray Williams Jr. ready to go here at the Great Detroit Open for the championship. Walter Ray, we just saw a moment ago your great final with Danny Wiseman last week. Anything you learned at all from coming so close, and now you're on the verge of some history trying to surpass Mark Roth for second place all time? Well, I bowled a great game last week. Uh, I'd like to throw the ball that well again this week. I, I'd take my chances. Uh, but Byron's been bowling very well this week. i fortunate enough to beat him last night, but I'm sure he's out for revenge, so I'm going to give him everything I got. All right, good luck to you. Now, Brian Voss, a moment ago you said, as good as it gets, how did you respond to the pressure so well this time? It's, I told you, um, you know, I, I expect that to happen. I, I was ready from it, for it for, for, uh, from game one. Actually, I'm still beating a little bit. Thank God we had five minutes to rest. That was, a, that was a huge match. You know, over the years, Walter and I have had some really good matches, and I expect the same here. Best of luck. Ready two Hall of Famers head-to-head. -head. Couldn't ask for anything better today. Don't go anywhere. Hold on to your your hats because two heavyweights are going to go at it. The last time these two faced each other, the score was Brian Boss coming out on top, 265 to 257. It's just going to be interesting to see if Brian gets into that situation again. Just, you know, how much, how many times can he go to the well and pull that, pull that rabbit out of his hat and keep striking when he needs to? Look out. Ray Williams Jr. chose the lane setup. 
as the higher seed. And two left for his spare. Wild card champion so far. Our first USA stop in Wichita. Dave DeAnchemont took care of that. But just three wild card champions in this format. Saw the records as well on the bottom of that stat. Early mark. Walter Ray getting things going. Perfect pocket shot. So Randy, it has been four years since they've matched up with a championship on the line, but they know each other so well. Do they look back in their heads to those big title matches now? Well, I mean, they're they're aware of it. It's not like they go back and say, well, what happened the last time? I, you know, they just know that when these two guys face each other, they know that they're going to get everything that player has. There's no holding back. There's no lay down. These guys are, are solid. Yeah. Great start. Each guy knows that they have to strike. They have to bowl, they have to show up and perform at their best to beat the other opponent. That great ball roll from Walter Ray, the ball just staying on line. Super look from our crew there, great angle on the ball rotation. Flying its way into the pocket. Second frame for Voss. Whoa. That came in way light, oh hugging the channel, and a difficult mark to pick up here. Well, that was an errant shot, and obviously that ball was way too far right. What you got to do is you got to get the ball over here to the left side of the head pin, throw it over into the 10. The ball will cover the 2 and the 8. Spare conversion rate perfect today. Good shot, Brian Voss. Finishes starting with a two events in Japan, the Dream Bowl and Japan Cup. And then things really turning around after he did not bowl well at all in Kansas City. And that is when he spent several hours breaking down his approach, the arm swing, his equipment, everything on videotape. Revamp to style. Look at the results. Almost made the show last week, which would have given him three in a row. Again, you know, especially for a player like Brian Boss, who's won so many times, been here so many times, you see how focused he is on his target. Those eyes never leave in the target. Great tip for those at home. You want to get to be more accurate and make shots. Concentrate on your target until the ball rolls over it. Straight up there. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Triple for Walter Ray Williams Jr. to start this match. And a 24-pin lead. Quite a resume. And look at that little sign that actually passes out those masks himself. Now, that's pretty unique in a sport where perhaps the best active bowler is passing out little masks of himself before the match to the fans. Love the interaction the bowlers have with the fans. One of the most endearing aspects of this sport. Up close and personal, the PBA. This is up close and personal. Great matchup between a couple of legends. Another championship on the line, each making big shots at big times. Who will emerge? We'll find out. Who survives here with a trophy on the line? Four straight strikes to start things off for Walter Ray Williams, Jr. He's down 34. Working on a strike is Brian Boss. Strike here puts him down 24 pins. Needs to get started. Came in high and the 6-10 up. Bad shots. Yeah, and I, I think that's all it can be. You know, Brian just came off of this, this pair of lanes, pulled a great game against Mike Scroggins, made great shots. His bar reaction was just perfect. First ball in that right lane went light, out the window. This one goes high. Spare can look out. Right. Look out, he missed the six. Open frame. And perhaps Randy.
having to get the double and then the eight pin count in the last match did it take him out of this one well you know you got to ask yourself did it did it uh, take too much out of him i mean that's that there brian missing that is just a lack lacks of concentration because of the fact that his ball's not hitting the pocket on that lane too much thinking about the ball not hitting the pocket not enough focus on shooting this pair now a huge deficit finds the pocket there on lane 39 but the open frame on four could be fatal Round of 32, look at that incredible output from Walter Ray Williams Jr. Seven game match against Chris Hayden the, in the round of 32. Walter's down 3-1. Fifth game, comes back, shoots 300. All of a sudden, big momentum swing. Starts the next game with a front six, 18 in a row, wins that game, goes on to beat Chris Hayden in seven games. Saw Mr. Hockey, Gordy Howe, is here to watch the end of this match. He and Walter Ray had quite a conversation about horseshoe pitching before our match today. Back to the players' locker room. Walter Ray picks up the 10. Does, does Gordy, like, uh, practice flipping horseshoes into the net, or sure. did he actually pitch them? Whatever he wanted to do with his incredible <laughs> records, the World Championship, the March, that's what we're going to be here in March. And Taylor Lanes, in addition to some arena bowling, the point breakdown, 25000 on the line for the winner, in addition to $40,000. What trouble. Talk, talk about having uh, your guy on the ropes and then just, do that. just letting him, you know, just letting him off. You let him off the hook here. This ball goes right through the schnoz. And he's going to leave himself 6-7-10. Gotta get the ball over into this area here, slide the six over into this into the seven pin. Walter A, very, very excellent split shooter. Using the spare ball. Look out! Seven pin stands at an open frame. And the door opens for Brian Voss again quickly. And can you say, Brian Voss, I have life? You know, getting back to Gordy Howe, I shook his hand when we met him earlier. And it was like shaking a piece of steel. <laughs> yeah, mine's still sore. Oh my God! How many broken? How many times he broken those fingers? What a nice man! Can you imagine bowling for six decades professionally? He played hockey. That's an amazing. Six decades professional. On lane 40, oh. trying to take advantage, but a 10 pin. And that's the one he wanted. First ball that hit that pocket on that lane. Leaves the ugly 10 pin. If he strikes there, he can strike again in the seventh frame to make the lead one pin. Right now it's a 31 pin deficit. He won't miss this, trust me. 224 max for him, 255 for Walter Ray. We're coming to you from Taylor Lanes outside Detroit. And our tour stop, Greater Detroit Open. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire ESPN PBA crew, don't forget. Timber Sports coming up on ESPN as soon as we finish business here, but things have become interesting. An open frame for Brian Voss on the fourth. Walter Ray has it open on the sixth for him. Well, still alive, still alive is right. Still alive. Brian Voss can strike out for 224. Walter Ray's going at a one, or excuse me, 215 pace. That means if he strikes and spares all the way out, shoot 215, so plenty of life. One of the most mentally focused players in tour history, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Boy, is it 10 pin, wiggles and stays up somehow. Do you think he responds all right to the open? Oh yeah, well I mean, you know, Walter Ray is mentally tough as he is. That open frame doesn't even factor into the equation, but watch this, this was almost a pocket 710, then it was nine, then it's nine and a half. I think it was up to nine and three quarters for Yeah, a second. well, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> On lane 40 for a mark. You can mark it down in the seventh. Right now, Walter in the driver's seat, knowing that if he stays clean, that it's up to Brian Voss to perform, to come get him to strike, basically strike out. Amazing consistency. Trying for a 10th straight year. Won twice last year in Kentucky and in Toledo, Ohio. Oh, eight pin tripped out late, but he'll take it. Oh, 
Wow! Almost a horrible break followed by a great one. The solid eight, the only true tap in bowling. Why? Because this ball is perfect in the pocket. And watch the bowling ball go right by the eight. Some pin comes out, trips it out. And it was like, great shot, I'm happy. Oh, oh, I'm happy again. His wife's certainly pleased with that result. Strike here. Boss is down 21 pins. 10 pin. Messenger stopping a couple of inches shot. Wow, and you know, the last two shots on that lane just as good as Brian could throw them for nine spare both times. And I gave him the spare. He's not going to miss the spare. Bear here in a strike in the ninth frame. He's got to have some help from Walter Ray. His maximum shrinks to 204 now. Well, 31 pins, Walter Ray working on a strike. However, Walter did open the sixth frame with split. Brian needs to strike here to set himself up for the 10th frame. And then wait to see what Walter Ray Williams Jr. does. Need some magic in the foundation frame. There it is. The start you wanted there. That's a breath of a, a chance. Good finish. Brian walks back, says that's a breath of a chance. Walter Ray's thinking, well, let me just snatch that last breath away from you right here. The strike in the ninth frame. More than 130 TV appearances. Looking for second place all time. Ooh. PBA Tour history and wins, but there's a seven pin and the doors and shut yet. Well, he needs a spare here, which will give him 195 if you give him a strike in the first ball in the 10th frame. Spare here, he needs a mark and good count to win. First things first, cross lane at the seven pin. You hear that ball rolling over the thumb hole. That's because he ha has his hand going straight up the back of the ball, and the ball is actually rolling end over end, about as close to the finger and thumb holes as you can get. That reduces hook. This was the lane he split on in the sixth frame. You saw a moment ago what he needs. Yeah! 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 He has got it. And just cured it. <laughs> a little sigh of relief there going, ooh, bigger motorhome. Yes. Well, watch this. Just... He'll overtake Mark Roth second all-time and just absolutely pures it. Guaranteed $40,000 closer to that motorhome that they've been looking at for some time. It's okay. Better there than it's first okay. ball. Solid 10-pin. And a solid performance by Walter Ray, but I think that it was Brian Voss's own undoing. Got off to a rough start late. Missed the spare. Made great shots coming down the stretch. Had the two taps, and that was the difference in the game. Just going to fast track to the end of this one since it's already clinched for Walter Ray. Picks up another mark. Been going great, right, man. Been going real good. 215 is the final for Walter Ray Williams Jr. And a 35th career title. Brian Voss denied a second championship. Yeah, for, I got two seconds here, so that's nice. <laughs> Pretty nice to shake the hand of Gordy Howe, too, after us. you win one. Thanks a lot. Thanking the proprietors here. Uh, Taylor Lanes, Ted and Liana Dobbins. Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot for Bye. He did that left-handed, everybody. Hey, guys. How good an athlete is he? <laughs> <laughs> to go, Entertaining man. to the very right, last we'll shot. Yeah. We'll do it again. Brian Voss. Okay. But the moment belongs to Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Big goal of his to become PBA Player of the Year again for the first time since 98. He's on his way. Another great performance today in the truck.